What's up, Internet? So in today's video, we're going over the Fusion Engine version 2, how to replace the airline. Uh, also going over how to install an IGL if you have one, you should do so. So if you want to see a detailed video of how to break down Fusion Engine, refer to our Fusion Engine version 2 assembly and maintenance video. But for this video, I'm just going to take it apart real fast and get down to the point where you need to be. So I'm going to shift from the warp speed and get that done. All right, so now we're down to this point, the cylinder system. It's going to be best if we loosen the bandit fittings, get them kind of out of the way of the airline. So again, it's going to be a flathead screwdriver. We're going to just loosen these screws. They don't actually come out. They're caps on their side by the owner. Just they fall away. All right, so I can kind of like spread them out of the way. So I'm not going to bother you here. All right, so to remove the original airline, there's a black collar on your fitting. So that's gonna be pressed down towards the silver part of the fitting. That'll unlock the airline. So pull that down and pull on the airline. You might have to like push it a little bit and then pull it out because there's teeth inside of it. To actually grip the airline. You can see that there. But when you push it in there, it's kind of like a Chinese finger trap. Push it in and it can't come back out until you press that collar down. So that's out. All right, so if you want to remove the fitting itself, you might notice there's no tool marks on the outside of it. So a lot of people wonder, how do you do that? So it actually has a hex drive inside the fitting. So it's for a four millimeter Allen wrench. Just drop that in. Let's torque double bits from this way. There you go. Let's back that out. You'll see there's a crush collar on the end of it, or crush washer. There. All right, so that is all you have to do to remove it. There's no thread sealant or anything like that in there. It just seals to this uh, crush washer against the surface of the cylinder. So if you're just replacing this fitting, um, you're going to basically do reverse order, putting it back in. Now, this should be torqued to about 30 foot-pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench, though, kind of just go until the crush washer looks kind of opaque. It's kind of like that spot on the surface now. I'll we'll just torque it a little bit. See it kind of changes color a little bit like that? That's what you're looking for. But that's what I have to do to replace the fitting. And you just probably just stick this back in, give it a tug, and it's locked in place. So that's that part. All right, so if you have an IGL and you want to install that, it's going to seal a little bit differently. So with the original input fitting, you've got the crush washer that seals against the shoulder on the fan itself. We don't have that here. It's just the hex drive. So it can't actually use the same crush washer here to seal against the cylinder. So this will usually come with uh, Teflon tape already pre-applied to it, usually a black Teflon tape. You can use that because that's gonna create a seal between the threads and the cylinder itself. But there are some issues with using that. It doesn't always work the best. It can have a slight leak. Also, when you thread in, the threading as you thread into the, the cylinder, it can actually flake pieces of that Teflon tape off bank into your system and cause a leak or other further issues. Um, so we generally recommend using a liquid thread sealant. We recommend Loctite 545. We use those to assemble all of our air systems, so we know it works very well. So that's what we use here today. So let's get this prepped up and ready to go. First, obviously, if it has black, black Teflon tank on it, you have to take that off first, make sure the threads are clean. We use like rubbing alcohol to make sure any of the oil or grease is off the uh, threads, make sure it's going to adhere correctly to it. So you don't want to get the thread sealant over the end of the fitting. You want to stay on the threads itself. So just need only a drop or so. Pretty good. All right. Then you just start it by hand. So they usually come with this little cheapy wrench. Um, I, don't, I don't like using them because they're really hard to use. So if you want to use a regular wrench, a big boy wrench, use a 5 16th. 
and I'm just gonna snug it down. You don't need to be super tight, but nice and snug is what we're going for here. That's good. All right, so after that, I'm gonna give it a couple hours for the sealant to cure, and that's about it though. Uh, a couple notes is if you have an older system, um, you might find that the hole for the airline to exit the solid side plate is too narrow for the fitting old IGL to fit through. Um, if you have a, a newer system, we've actually enlarged it for, especially for the IGL, so I should pass through correctly. But if you have an older one, you will have to take a drill bit uh, and enlarge that hole. But aside from that, that just about covers it. Um, if you have any other questions, please comment below. And until next time, see you later.